product's not igniting. The quantity of the material, fabric, is vital to the results you will see in part two. The battery used is a lithium ion cell pack, greater than 60 volts and more than 45 amp hours in capacity. The battery pack does not have any plastic housing. You can see here the large battery pack is firstly placed into the three-layered manufactured fabric and the end is folded over to make sure the complete pack is covered. The case is slightly larger than the pack, so the battery pack has a minimal amount of room for expansion during the igniting process of the thermal runaway. The latches are locked, and then the waiting began. Please note we did not have the charging cable connected for the test. Welcome to part two of the video. Lithium ion battery packs in many different products have experienced thermal runaway fires. During our tests, we found it extremely difficult to physically force the battery pack to start the thermal runaway. The first test of battery packs, we waited over 24 hours for the packs to ignite. For this test, the wait was over three hours. So for a battery pack to start the thermal runaway is very difficult. So everyone should be aware that a very low percentage of lithium battery packs will experience thermal runaway, fires. As we waited, we could see some faint smoke starting to escape from the battery case. The thermal runaway process is now starting. In many cases, you will find the material bag made from the special fabric will contain the thermal runaway to a minimal number of cells. For the purpose of the video, we made sure each positive cell line would ignite. Now the battery pack is starting thermal runaway. Notice there is a small amount of smoke at the beginning, and then, as the pack starts to heat up, from one or a few of the cells igniting, the chain reactions occur. The battery pack on occasion has sections ignite simultaneously, which is from the way we have deliberately tampered with the cell's positive electrodes to make sure the whole pack does ignite. I would imagine the thermal runaway would be less severe in a real scenario as the fabric and the case would slow up or even stop the pack's thermal runaway and or a bunch of cells igniting at the same time, depending on the pack's problem. But in most cases, it would be a single cell or a line of cells that is damaged, which could be contained to this area only. Without the case, the fire will be out of control. There is no limit to the heat that is produced and the amount of oxygen that could be used to feed the process. The fire would be very powerful. What happens to a battery pack during thermal runaway? 1. Heating starts. 2. Protective layer breaks down. 3. Electrolyte breaks down into flammable gases. 4. Separator melts, possibly causing a short circuit. 5. Cathode breaks down, generating oxygen. 6. Flammable electrolyte can ignite when exposed to the oxygen. In most cases, I would imagine that it would ignite. Now you can see here the pack is really firing. Quite a few cells are bursting, and even at times the case is slightly raising up from the pressure. What can cause the battery packs to enter thermal runaway? 
one or a combination of the following could cause a pack to start thermal runaway. High temperatures in the cells, unbalanced cells or packs, overcharging the cells, high charging temperatures, quick charging, damaged cells from improper handling, cell pack is soldered incorrectly, consistent use at high temperatures, no safety redundancy system, water enters the pack, cell voltage exceeds safety threshold, excessive charge or discharge current, choosing the wrong cell for your application. All of those causes could contribute to a disaster that everyone would like to avoid, to make each pack in every device in the world 100% safe to use for years on end is impossible. So we must make sure we can engineer our large packs to the safest levels possible. One of the most important protectors of the battery pack is the BMS, the Battery Management System, which needs to work overtime to analyse the pack's state, even to the point where it cannot withstand the overtime and itself malfunctions first before the battery pack has a larger problem. The battery management system is designed for safety. Perhaps the most important aspect of the safe lie-ion battery pack design is the BMS, sometimes called the pack protect circuit or safety circuit. The BMS is the management brain of the pack that keeps it within acceptable performance and safe operating conditions. These circuits have been improved over time to allow an almost unlimited number of series cell connections for high voltage systems like our jet boards. The following are the typical safety requirements and capability of the BMS systems. Cell voltage safety. The BMS should have a solution to prevent any cell in the battery system from being charged or discharged if its cell voltage exceeds a safety barrier. High and low voltage safety barriers should be set, increased or decreased, with respect to the cell temperature. Different brand cells will have different heat outputs when using our jet boards. Cell current safety. The BMS should have a solution to prevent excessive charge or discharge current through any cell in the battery system. Short circuit currents and extended length high current should be differentiated from expected high peak currents. Fuses should be considered as a backup to electronically controlled switches. If multiple cells are hardwired in parallel, fusible links should be considered to limit current flowing into a severely internally shorted cell. Cell temperature safety. The BMS should prevent charge and or discharge current when the cell temperature is above a dangerous threshold to prevent initiation of thermal runaway. Cell balancing. Every cell in the battery system should be balanced to the same relative capacity with the other cells. If the battery system is constructed from series and parallel connected batteries, a means to keep all the lines balanced is needed. When purchasing cells on many occasions, the cells are not balanced, and one must be careful the cells are original and not knockoffs. Charge control. Thermal runaway has been reported as happening more often when a cell is being charged, since charging stresses the cell both electrically, especially if cells are unbalanced, and mechanically. A lie-ion cell expands slightly when charged. For this reason, a well-designed BMS will control the charger when charging the battery. The charger itself should not be independently trusted to charge the battery pack to its maximum capacity. Internal short detection. Internal lie-ion cell shorts have been the primary reason for initiation of a thermal runaway. Quality BMS designs have algorithms to directly detect both early onset and longer term wear out aggregation of internal cell shorts and notify the product operator to replace the defective battery pack series or parallel lines. Safety redundancy. Redundancy is common in mission critical applications. It can be used by BMS and modular system design structure to improve battery system safety by shutting down dangerously defective sections of the battery system and then continuing operation at a reduced capacity until replacement or repairs can be made. I'm sure there would be some areas of the BMS and the raw material used for the BMS which would account for the quality of control the BMS has over the battery pack. For example, water is not mentioned and I am positive the BMS cannot stop the water if it enters the pack. The MOSFETs are also a very important factor in the BMS design.
You now notice the battery pack thermal runaway is slowing down. The entire pack is close to being destroyed, and there are a limited number of cells remaining. The sticker on the top of the case has partially melted from the heat. All in all, this case, together with the fabric inside, has controlled the fire. After the thermal runaway has run its course, you can see our material fabric is still intact. The entire battery pack is totally burnt inside the fabric and the black coloured residue that contains a lot of the toxic substances is still inside the bag. The three special layers absorb the majority of the harmful substances. Many companies have different size battery packs for which we will need to construct an individual mould for the stainless steel case. The correct size and specifications are a must to allow the correct amount of oxygen and area space in case of thermal runaway. Each battery pack will also have different positions and sizes of the charging port and cable which must be included in the mould. Batteries must be charged inside the case with the lid closed and locked. If you would like to order a case, we would need the following specifications to construct the correct size and structure for your battery packs. 1. The length by width by height of the battery pack. 2. Images showing the position of the charging port and the charging cable. 3. Specifications of the charging port. Length by width by height or diameter by height. 
please contact us at info at talkjetboards.com. If you have any further questions, we would be pleased to assist.